Welcome to Gold Derby. I have senior editor Denton Davidson here with Monty Taylor from the Challenge USA, who was eliminated in the arena by his Big Brother Alliance member Tyler on Thursday's episode. Monty, this is one of the most brutal eliminations I've ever seen. You guys were there for like three hours building a pyramid of balls on a spool. Talk me through sort of what you were thinking and what it was like just to be out there for that long. Yeah, well, Denton, thanks for having me first and foremost, but like it was one of the most challenging things I've ever done, no pun intended, but like it just took so much determination and patience because while you're going through this, there's, there's a cable that you're attached to that has a counterweight. So it is a physically exerting exercise to walk from the spool to the balls and bring them up to the spool and stack them up. So that's one thing already going against you. And then throughout this entire time, it was it was cool to have Tyler there because we would kind of encourage each other. We were like, man, like you keep going, keep fighting through it. You guys might have heard that throughout the episode. But um, it was also just emotionally conflicting because you know that you're going to take out your closest ally in the house, regardless of what happens. One of you is going home. So that was tough, but um, but yeah, man. I mean, we both still got bruises from the the harness that was holding us to the spool and whatnot. Like it, it was grueling. Were you guys like taking breaks? And was everyone on the sidelines just standing for three hours? Was TJ getting sandwiches? Like, what is everyone nope. else doing while you guys are are there? Because that's a long time just to sit there. Yeah, no, they gotta thug it out with us. You know, they just gotta <laughs> sit there and kind of take it. And uh, uh-huh. TJ, I mean, he's he's standing as well and he's like narrating a lot of the experience. So, you know, he'll egg me on, he'll egg on uh, Tyler and all that. Um, But yeah, the the rest of everybody, I mean, the most that might be happening, they might be getting waters from production, but that's about it, man. Like you're just sitting there watching. So they wanted it to be over just as soon as we did, but I don't think as much because we were actually going through it. There was this attack on Big Brother, and there was a counterattack on Survivor heading into the arena. Sebastian had almost as many balls in that hopper as you did, but the players ultimately got what they wanted, which was you versus Tyler. Um, They're just wrecking this Big Brother alliance. Why do you think Survivor took their eyes off the challenge vets? Like, they could have voted for Wes if they wanted. Like, people could have put Wes in there. Why do you think they're so focused on Big Brother right now? Yeah, I think, um, you know, that initiative to take the vets out sort of fractured after um, Desi was nominated by the red team. So when the red team had won um, that one challenge with the semi trucks and the disc and all that, where they blocked the green team from winning, because it would have been very obvious what we would have done. And it was the smartest thing for a bananas and a Tory to do is to make sure that the green team didn't win because we had the numbers on our team to make sure we could vote in those challenge vets. But then when we didn't win and the red team did, there was an opportunity to continue on the same trend of putting up more vets or to shift directions. And at that point you saw in that deliberation, Josh was going crazy about making sure that, you know, none of, you know, his people were put up, but he was very adamant about Desi being put up. And then I think there were opportunities for folks to save one another. Like I think Tiffany might've been able to save Desi in that situation. I think, uh, what's his name? Dusty might've been able to save Lewis. So there were a lot of people kind of like backing out and not stepping up to protect one another and force it to be another vets um, nomination. So once that kind of fell through the cracks, at that point, me and Tyler started noticing how survival was moving a little bit different. They didn't trust us as much after that point. And then once we started seeing like, all right, I think we're on the outs with Survivor, we started trusting them a lot less too. And we noticed that they never voted for each other. We were like, there's seven people in this house who have not once put a ball on one another. Meanwhile, you got the eight people who came from Big Brother throwing shots at each other since the dawn of time, you know? So we were clearly fractured. We were clearly not aligned. Whereas with Survivor, it became so much more obvious with time. And that's when I think we decided to shift our focus towards attacking them as opposed to the vets at that point, because they were less of a risk. What was the most difficult aspect of the challenge overall throughout the season? And how would you compare it to Big Brother? Well, yeah, 
But then, then you, if you know about my experience on Big Brother, I was on the right side of things for the most part. You know, yeah. the entire time, I pretty much knew what was happening. I knew who was going to get blindsided. Yeah, and towards the end, I was able to make decisions um, based off of the wins that I got. So, like, I always just felt a little bit more in control. This experience was the exact opposite. I felt like I had no control. I felt like I had no idea who I can truly trust outside of a Tyler, Alyssa, um, Alyssa Lopez as well came along, Tiffany. You know, I always trusted them and I knew that they would ever come after me. But outside of that, I mean, I just couldn't couldn't really read the challenge vets, couldn't really read Survivor. Um, and I'll tell you what, like, there's something different about those Survivor folks because of the type of show that they come from, where it's like such a short filming cycle, you know, they're filming for 30 days, whereas I was in the house for 95 days. There's a lot more time to politic, you know, there's a lot more time to build rapport. I walk into this house, day one, challenge you know and you just meet these people and then right after that challenge people are getting nominated and then the next day you know people are voting you know for you to go in so at that point like it just it became so difficult to actually politic and get ahead of it and um it, it was just something hard to navigate so yeah it, it was it was a challenging season but i think given the opportunity to do it again i would have so many more relationships now and would be a lot more prepared socially to go in and not be like target number one. And you're a competitive guy. You were the runner up on Big Brother. You and Tyler had that in common. He also was on his season. Was he your number one? Like, who were you most loyal to in the house and who did you see yourself going to the end with? Yeah, I think um, I would say as time started to go on, Tyler became my number one male. And then my number one female was Alyssa right? Alyssa um, Snyder, because we had come into the house already. Um, yeah, I, I feel like we were just all that we had <laughs> for the most part. So we we just didn't, we didn't have any options on that front. Like we could have tried to, and we did, we did build relationships with other folks, but we always just came to each other first with information. I trusted Alyssa Snyder all the way through. And so, so did I with Tyler as well. Um, so I think those were my number ones. And, you know, even after this elimination, I'm rooting for them, you know? Yeah. What was the most difficult challenge for you outside of the arena? Just the, those daily challenges. What What do you think was the toughest one? Oh, geez. Well, um, well, in particular for me, it would be the uh, capsize challenge. So that's the one where you have to swim off of the dock and then go to the boat and flip it over. Yep. And the reason the reason why it was more challenging for me was because the daily challenge before that, the uh, working the poles one, I dislocated my shoulder on that challenge. So it had popped out. They popped it back in. I got an x-ray. They said it was, you know, in the right place, but I was still compromised. Like it was still a lot weaker. You know, I'm hearing a lot of cracks and whatnot, like more than I would normally because it's, it's trying to get its strength back. So that swimming and doing all of those those uh, physically intensive things during capsize that made it the most challenging for me. And during that challenge, it was so cold. The water was so, um, so chaotic. Like we literally finished and I came out and I was so dizzy and so cold that I, I like, people literally looked at me like, yo, are you all right, man? Like you, you going to be okay after this. So it was, that was probably the toughest one. I feel like swimming is always difficult for, for a lot of the challengers. And that's where you see some of the vets um, excel. Just in this episode alone, I think it was you that said, I've never really dived before. And then they cut to bananas and he's like, I, I have a scuba diving license. Like it, there's just like stuff that they're prepared for that. Like you're not used to diving and pulling a rope to unscramble words at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> no, I'm not prepared for that at all. Then, and that was uh, that was challenging within itself. I mean, dude, I couldn't even I couldn't even pull myself down to a point where the puzzle the puzzle was legible. I it was just so murky, and then that water pressure when you're not used to it, like you just feel like you cannot breathe at all, and you just immediately try to come up for air. So it was tough. And the game moves so fast from what we see on on TV. You're there 24-7. What are you doing all those other hours of, hours of the day? I mean, is there time to really get to know each other in politic a little more than we see? Or is it just sort of, does it feel like a rigorous schedule when you're in the house? 
No, it's pretty rigorous. Um, like I said, like Big Brother, you got uh, a three month period that you're in the house as long as you last. Whereas with the challenge, like it's like a month, you know, so everything is happening on a day to day basis. Like there's always something new. So I'd say like once you first walk into the house, you got no chance. Like whatever social connections you came in with is essentially what you have to work with. But then as the season continues to progress, you can start to work. You can start to play a little bit more of that big brother game where you're, you're building rapport, you're, you're getting to know people. Um, and I think that that kind of showed throughout the, the season because I eventually started getting less balls in the hopper until this very elimination when, you know, Survivor kind of teamed up on that. But yeah, it, it was um, it was tough. It was tough to deal with socially just um, because it was so quick. That's something that I think Big Brother doesn't really have an advantage on. Whereas like Survivor, they're, they're probably used to that quick cycle of, of going through the experience. Uh, I know you have friends that still remain in the game. So I don't know what you know in terms of what happens in the future. So no spoilers, of course. But up until the point that you were in the house and playing the game, who did you feel like was playing the best game in the house? up to that point where you went home? Um, I mean, I honestly felt like, felt like Josh was really in the sweetest spot throughout the entire game. You know, him and, and Fest, I think also by nature of them having the relationships with the vets, but then also, um, you know, coming from Big Brother, like they never really caught any attention from us throughout the, the entire season um, because of that connection. But then they also had the vets on their side and the vets could then influence whoever they could on the survivor side. Like they they were just in the, the sweetest spot. So I, I'd probably say Josh was playing the best game and was the most comfortable throughout most of it um, up until I was eliminated at least. After that, I have no idea. But um, I, would, I would call Josh probably the best. And then on the survivor side, I, I would say – um, like a, a Chris was probably in the, the best position. He was only catching strays from us, you know, outside of that, nobody else was really throwing his name into the ringer. So I think those two guys were probably playing the best game socially, at least. And last question off topic. Have, are you caught up on this season of big brother? And if so, who do you like in the game? Yeah. Yeah. I have been watching. I didn't, I wasn't sure if I would have been to be honest with you. I was just like, no, I don't know if I got it in me to, you know, to keep 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 that same attachment to the show. But I went to the premiere and then I was hooked immediately. I was like, I got to keep watching, you know. So, um, yeah, for me, I think right now it's it's too early for me. I, I can't I can't pick somebody. I, I think everybody has their own quirks and their own personalities. I have not kept up with anything that's happening on Twitter. I'm not on there and never planned to be. <laughs> so for me, like, I'm not, I'm not sure like who's a fan favorite and not, but I think as the show continues to progress, I'll have a, a stronger opinion because once it starts to dwindle down, you see a little bit more of like how people are managing being in the house for so long. Right now it's easy. I mean, you're, you're only in there for about a month. And people are already starting to go crazy, which is, you know, to be expected. But the people who can maintain their head throughout this next month, that'll really tell me who's probably going to win. But um, I don't I don't have anybody who I'm rooting for. I, I just want to see a good show. All right. Same here. And I'm right there with you on Twitter. I'm, 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 I barely know what's going on either. Monty, sorry to see you go from the challenge so early, but it was fun to watch you. We can't wait to see you come back um, and hopefully that's soon. And thanks for sitting down and chatting with Gold Derby today. Yeah, thanks for the time, Denton.